Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Beautiful sunset, giant mountain, far off forest, little cabin, couple trees in the front. Super easy little beginner sunset that you can do. And I showed you all kind of different techniques with the clouds, the mountains, the trees, everything. So uh, you're obviously excited about painting this painting. That's why you clicked on the link. So check the description down below. Find all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. We're going to do it just like this. How did we get here? Oh my goodness. All right, I guess we're going to have to recreate the painting. Do you remember what it looks like? I have no idea. So let's make it up here as we go. We're going to go into a little bit of yellow. Just a little bit on the end of the brush. Look at that. Not too much. It got a little bit of a glob right there on the side, but no big deal. And then we're going to come up here. And we're just going to just make this nice arc, just dropping it down. And then we're going to kind of go the opposite of that down into any bit of water that we may have, right? Just like that. Just blend it out into this kind of little fan shape, sort of. Just like that. Okay, we're going to come in over our red over here. Just right on top of the yellow on the brush. So it'll mix together, right? Very lightly start dropping it in. Maybe we'll come down into the water. We're not really trying to blend anything in at all right now. Just literally dropping color onto the canvas, okay? Gonna come up here, a little bit more red. Just because I like the red to be super vibrant and it really likes to blend with the liquid white that's on the canvas, right? We touch that and get our liquid white. Gotta do that prior to doing this so we we have a nice wet canvas that we can work with. That's why all these colors blend from dark to very light like that. It's because all that liquid white. Okay, we're gonna come up here into the crimson. Gonna pull that down. Nice and full of color, look at that. Okay, we're gonna come up here, and we'll start at the top, maybe drop this in around our yellow, just gonna, just gonna surround it. All right, maybe drop it in from over here, kind of fill in some of those spaces. Again, we're gonna blend it out so it doesn't even really matter. Gotta have enough on our brush to get the canvas covered though. There we go. <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. All right, a little bit more of our crimson. Look at that, just around the edge. And we're just kind of blocking in all these colors, right? In these little arced motions, just like that, from top to bottom. Okay, leaving a little bit of sky white so we can, can come in with our blue right over the top of that crimson again, because we've used the crimson so much now and covered around so many areas that all the, the uh, yellow that was on the brush initially isn't gonna start messing with our blue and crimson color. Okay, we're gonna pull all those down so we get this nice dark bit of color. We come in from this side, just like that. Fill in all the whole rest, right? Put some blue down in the bottom down here, just a little. Don't need to do the whole, whole canvas. Never has to be covered. All right, so out here, our whole side's gonna be blue. So we'll fill all that in with blue. Gonna go back and cover the top, obviously. Let's come over here, a little bit more blue, a little bit more crimson. Just so let's get that purpley color. And then down in here, we don't matter if it goes green, right? We can even bring a little bit of it down here, just like that. Really cool. Now we're going to wash our brush very simply and easily. We're going to wash the brush, dip it into our thinner, shake it off into a trash can, and then into the old bucket. Love that noise. Look at that. Nice and clean. Dab it off on a paper towel over here. It really holds a lot of color left. So really dab it on a paper towel, get rid of it. Don't need to make it 100% dry, but we do need it sort of dry. Right, we don't want to go back up with any of that blue color in our brush and start to go into the yellow sky and have it go green, right? Now you can see our brush is pretty dry. It's not a whole lot of wetness in there. We dry most of it off. We come up in here very lightly with our yellow, start dragging some of that color in, right? Drag the yellow out, drag the orange in with these crisscross strokes, just like this. Ooh. Nice, drag some of that crimson in, just blend it all together so we get these nice soft edges. And our yellow is gonna shrink, right? It's, it's made to, it's going to shrink because we have to blend all these other colors with it. And we're gonna save maybe a real light area of yellow. And then we'll get this nice orange blend in. See how I'm staying away from all the blues still because we're not ready to touch anywhere that's blue yet. There we go, really bring down some of that color. Just like that, you get this nice, soft, blended bit of sky. You can literally go over back and forth. Beautiful little bit of sunset right there. Now, we're gonna come up, start down here in our water so we pick up some of that darker color and just blend it out side by side, just like that. Sideways swipes, come over here. We got our crisscross again. And the crisscross just helps blend everything out a lot smoother. Right? If you do this a hundred times, it's still going to look like you pulled it from one side. If you crisscross, 
crisscross, crisscross, crisscross, crisscross, right? Then it's gonna blend it all out. You're not gonna see any streaks from your brush. But don't come too far into that yellow area over there until we really get all those blues blended out. And then poof, we have this nice soft little thing that we can mess with. We can do all sorts of things with it. We're gonna wash our brush again, all right? <clears throat> we use the same old brush for this whole painting. Now, I usually find that the sky looks gorgeous without any clouds, and you can almost imagine that there are clouds up there. But just, just for, you know, the sake of it, let's put some clouds in. Now, I'm going to use an old fan brush, and let's decide, maybe down in here in the lighter color, we'll use some of this red, maybe mix it with some of our yellow. And maybe off the distance, we get these just very soft little floater clouds, right? Just soft. A couple little swipes here and there. And we're going to go in with our one inch brush and just very lightly blend those guys because we don't need them all to go away, right? A couple swipes to the side to get this very far off little bit of cloud way back there. All right, wipe all the, the paint off of that brush. Going to come back in, maybe mix up a little bit of the crimson with the blue since we've already done it there initially and sort of drag them through each pile. Then we'll have a nice little bit of purple here. You want to make sure there's more crimson than blue though. They don't have to be super dark red or super dark purple, but you don't want to have it go green over here, right? So let's see, if we got those far away things, maybe we start really small and then we start climbing up. We get these little far away clouds that live up here. All right, and we pull these guys back a little bit, almost like a wave. I'm gonna slide those guys back just a little. <clears throat> and then we're gonna see what it looks like. And come in, grab it up. And again, this is just the, the shadowing to the base, the bottom of our clouds. We can take a whole nother fan brush, come in here with some white, really get up a good amount of it on our brush on both sides. Maybe we come in here and we just tap a little bit. Tap, 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 right? Come back, get some more. Tap, tap, tap. Get these nice little fluffy bits, cool little pieces of cloud. Then we come back here, that same old brush, just very lightly going to start to spin them. And we're going to move and we're not going to go, we're not going to focus too many times on one area. All right, we're going to come back for a second time, pushing a little bit harder, just blending these little clouds out just like that, right? They don't have to look like anything. It doesn't have to be a certain shape or anything, really. It really doesn't. We can cover over some of that shadowy bit of our thing just so we see the smallest, smallest little amount of it. And now we got this really cool piece of cloud up there in the sky, a little far off guy way back here. We can even take some of that white on our fan brush. Just dab in a little bit way off in the distance, right? Depending on how thick we leave it, this one, if we leave it real thick like that, may look like it's closer. We swipe it up a little bit, swipe it over. Now it's real far off, way back there, right? Let's grab up our old knife. Actually, this is a brand new knife because one of the fans sent it to me. It was very sweet of her. Allison Phipps. She knows I'm talking about it. Every time I use this knife, I got to tell, got to talk about how Allison watched me break it and then how we had to uh, go days and days without it. But then she got a hold of London and got me a knife and they gave it to me live on one of the Sunday videos. It was very sweet. Okay, we mixed in our black, crimson, and blue. Right here into a dark pile, and we took a little bit of white, came into that, mixed it all up so we get this difference in color, right? All these little differences. Wipe off our knife so it's nice and clean. Come back in. Very far away little mountain, right? And we got to have it sort of be not flat at the top, right? But just very softly sloping down. You don't want it to be very much of a peak. It's very hard to shadow a peak like that, right? Maybe come up and give it a couple little differences. Take that paint, pull it down, just like that. Scrub it in anywhere you want, right? As long as it's not all up at the top. Just scrub it in down here. And when we do that, we give ourselves these cool little things that we wouldn't really be able to do on our own when we start to pull it out with the brush. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna come up here with the brush. We're gonna start to pull down, right? Maybe this side slopes off this way, very lightly. And then we come down, maybe we turn. We start to see a slope building right there, right? Just pulling it off. And because we have those differences where we added those little bits, it's changed it. You see what I mean? You start to see things. I start to see things. Yeah, nice soft little thing. Don't want it to grow too far. I've right, got to have a little bit of mist down around the bottom. Now that we pulled out our floating little bit of mountain over here, you can see where it wants us to highlight, right? It gives you 
Okay, maybe this side's in the shadow, maybe that's a little bit high lit, maybe there's some shadow, and you can kind of decide based on what it looks like <clears throat> when you pull yours out, what yours is gonna look like. Okay, we're gonna grab up a little bit of white, we're gonna grab up a little bit of blue, the smallest, like, like 100th blue, one one hundredth of blue versus the white, right? Not a lot, because we need it to be nice and bright. And then we'll take up some of this shadow mixture that we made, blend that into it, so we get this little soft gray, need a little bit more blue in there, soft grayish, bluish color. Very light though, it's gotta be light. It's gotta be close enough to the, the white snow color. There we go, just like that, okay? And we're gonna come in here. I like doing the shadows first, because you can always cover over what you don't like, okay? Literally gonna take our knife, scoop up a good amount, right? Come over here, maybe with the other camera it'll see, right? Just shake it until the knife runs out of paint, okay? And then we come over here, shake it, shake it, shake it, all over the place. Shaky shakies, right? Following our, our guide that we made when we pulled the thing out, see? Maybe on this side, we just slide it over a little. Don't need to go all the way to the edge because we're gonna have something here. You don't wanna have too much paint there. Okay, maybe, I don't know, there's like a little sliver of shadow down in there and it starts to flow away or, or whatever, whoever, who knows? If we don't like it, we'll cover it, right? It's very simple, very simply done. Now on the back side of this little peak, maybe he's got a little bit of shadow over here, okay? All you need, just the littlest bit. And then we'll come in here, <clears throat> grab up a good amount of our white, a little bit of our dark grayish color. So our snow is not gonna be perfectly pure white, right? We don't want it to be the purest of pure whites. We're gonna save that for when we get up close. Okay, we're gonna come over here. Again, watch the knife, right? When I notice I start to run out of paint, you start to lose all those little breaky areas, okay? So you go back and you get some more. And the reason why we do the shadows first is so you get that nice crisp kind of a uh, ridge, right? Come over here again, pull the knife down, scrape it up again, kind of find a new spot, pull it down. But we're pulling it down and turning the knife. See how it goes like this? We're turning it. And that'll create the slope of our mountain. Okay, maybe over here. We don't want it all covered, so I'm not gonna cover everything. I'm gonna let them kind of blend in a little bit, mix different areas, right? Gotta get the top, gotta get the top edge. Right, maybe a little bit up there. There's a little bit of a shadow or it's a cave or something. Right, we're just gonna let them blend together, very lightly pull down. That's all you gotta do. The right angle, the right pressure, Slide it down, you got your cool little mountain, right? Very simply done. Come up here again, follow those same angles. If we come over here and go straight, it's not gonna look the same, right? We have to follow those angles that the mountain is telling us to follow. And you don't need a whole huge amount of paint. You really don't. If it's very thick, it's gonna be harder to add different things to, right? So keep that in mind. You don't want a whole excessive amount of paint and I never like to have it in straight lines when we're doing our shadows so we always try to add a little bit of a little bit of character to it some kind of something right like over here we're like missing there we go just want a little bit of shadow just like that just save the smallest little area coolest little thing just by having the smallest touch right you'll make a, a whole new thing it'll be all organic and just because you accidentally touched over here and did that all of a sudden it looks so much better than it did before you're like, wow, I gotta remember how to do that for next time. And that's what it's about for me. Remembering how to do that same thing you just did and apply that to another painting down the road, which eventually ends up getting tough. So many things you can do in a painting, so many places you could go, so many things. So it's hard to even plan out, you know, what to do, where to do anything. There we go. We ended up, we ended up going a little bit far over here because we get talking and we, we forget. All right, now we're gonna take our, our brush very lightly, swiping up in the same directions that we came down. All right, so over here, we can't do that. We came this way, so we've gotta go this side. Very, very, very lightly, okay? All it does is sort of blur those areas just a little bit. Then we'll come in, a couple little taps with just the corner of the brush. That's all we're really doing, tapping it, dragging it down. Tapping it, dragging it down. All right, coming up, grabbing some of that color and depositing it as we tap down. All right, this side, same thing. All we're doing is tapping it and dragging it down, just in a fast motion. Tap, 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 till we run out. Tap, 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 right? The farther you go, the farther your mountain will grow. And we'll take it and just make a few little circles. 
all of a sudden we have this nice soft little floating mountain way off in our di in the distance. Right? So simply done. Okay, now we can't use the same gray to create our trees that we created the mountain with, otherwise they're not gonna stand out. We need to make them much darker. So much more black, much more blue. And then these are gonna stand out away from the mountain behind it. Now we'll take that, grab that same old fan brush we were using, load it up full. And what I mean by full, I don't mean full on the, the bristles, not all the way up to the metal, right? Just full, nice and sharp. And then who knows, maybe we had a forest that came in, started to live off back here, right in the middle. All right, go like that. We don't want to be the same height. So we go down and up and down and up, kind of filling in all those areas. And then we'll come down here and just sort of recreate what we've done above, down below. A couple nasty taps is all we're really doing, right? We'll come back in, grab that last little bit of paint. We're going to go fill in some of these areas a little bit darker, especially around the middle. You want the middle much darker than you want the top and the bottom. It's going to help with our shadows. It's going to help with our reflections. It's going to help with all sorts of stuff, right? And we have all these crazy little bits. I'm going to take them right in the middle, drag these parts up, just like that. Get this cool little bit of far away distance, right? Same thing on the bottom. Drag them down, just like that. Except the thing about the bottom, we're gonna swipe back and forth one or two times. They gotta be equal though. If you do them too many times in one way, it will move your reflections away from where they are. So be careful. All right. Now, what are we gonna do with this land back here, Josh? We got this far away little bit of, of lake, right? The higher we go up with our, with our brush, the further those trees are, you know, get pushed away. Now, what can we do? Let's do this, in fact. Let's go grab these over here. And we're just gonna start to come up a little bit higher with these guys. Just a little bit. So they're gonna, they're gonna, it's gonna make sense when we get over to the side. We're gonna have that little bit of background back here. All right, trees got much taller as we're coming over this way. Much, much taller. And of course, they gotta start coming out further down around the bottom. So we're gonna dab in a little bit of arced shape like that that we can then grab with our brush and pull out to the side. So you get this darkness, get our little bit of land, our reflections we got back there. We're gonna take our knife, scrape up a little bit of dark, come in a little bit flat, maybe come down, and then we'll continue, we'll come down, we'll continue this way. Now the reason we do that is to add room. We, we're, we're, we're saving room for what we're going to add on top. So if we have that brown and we start back here, Right, and then we can come down a bit further on the next one. So it looks like it pushes that bit back, right? And you don't have to do this all with a knife. I'm just dumping, dumping the color on. So we get this little bit of dirt. And then we can take it with our brush and just make it very soft. That's what I like to do. I like it very soft. Get this little bit of far away color. You don't have too much paint. And now we that little dark line underneath our water makes it look like the land is sitting up a bit. And that is the coolest thing to me. Take a little bit of liquid white right underneath that dark line. Ooh, missed it. There we go. All right, the cool thing about liquid white is it's very easy to move along the canvas. You don't have to, it's, it's very easy to put too much on there too. Pull that guy out to the side, right? The ones that are very far away, we don't need them to look like they're so close. We don't want to have a giant ridge of paint, you know, way far away versus the ones that are up here. The ones up here, yeah, we can go big. We can make the, the thing bigger. We can use more paint. We can have it come out more or we can do whatever because it's closer up, right? It's not a, a thing that's so far away that we can't really see it, which is once again why I like to take those ones that are real far away and just kind of lightly pull them to the side. And that way everything just sort of grows as it comes towards us, right? Now, why don't we get a whole big bunch of paint again? We're gonna use up that black and crimson and blue. All right, I'm gonna come over here and make another big pile of this dark paint. It's our favorite color, this shadowy color. Fantastic little color. All right, all right, where's it going? There we go. There we go, get a big old amount of it. Trying to run away on me. Okay, we're gonna grab our fan brush again. 
right through it, loading it up. Look at how much that big pile of paint is almost, you know, half of it is almost in our brush right here. You need a whole lot. So what if we did some far away ones over here? We'll put them like this, them straight down, just like that, okay? Do another guy back here, a little bit taller. Straight down, very easy. Very, very simple. Coming in again. Look, notice the angle of our brush this time, it's tilted downward. So we're doing much more Bob Ross style branches, which is okay. You can go different, right? I don't like the downward sagging ones because they look sad, but it's all right. Don't want to overdo it. All we're doing is providing a little bit of shadow, some base. Our brush is down. It's facing down like that. It's not facing up. We're going to come in here. This guy is not as crisp. There we go. All right, we'll show. Let's do, do another one like that. Okay, just the corner, though. Just touching in. Look at it. It starts to grow. All right? Just the corner. So all we're really using, tapping it, and then we're letting it grow out like that. Cover up most of the stuff back here. We don't need to see all the stuff back in there. All right? Those two trees kind of grew together. Provides a lot of depth and distance. Now, very lightly, pull over to the side. All right, you see we have come down, then we go straight to kind of match up with our hill over here. Just like that. Seems like our, our reflection for that guy is going to get lost. But that's okay. That is okie dokie. There we go. A little bit of that. This liquid light's just like too bright for me. There we go. Much better. <clears throat> so now we have our nice little easy part of our land right here. Take that, make it a little bit darker. We can pull that all the way down that same angle, just like that. Poof, that's gonna be cool. We can even take that one inch brush, flip it upside down, and just fill in that little bit of area. All right, again, pulling down in one direction, just like this. And then we're gonna flip it up. We're gonna push up over here. Just giving it this background color, right? Pull that down, and then we'll fix our little bit of, uh, of shoreline, and then we'll be good. Poof, 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 cool little pieces. Little parts of our forest back there. Nice little easy bit. We can even take this part, and just to be cool, we can add a little pine tree way off. All right, this will be one of the upside down ones. Uh, upside down, the upward facing ones. There we go. Pull them off to the side, give a little bit of shadow on each side. Fantastic little thing. Take our micro liner brush into our paint thinner, into our little pile, just like that. Right, and we'll come in here and just dump in a couple little bits of branch or trunk, pieces of a tree back here. Some things that you might see way off. Maybe there's another little bit that goes in there too. Who knows? Who knows? Because we're going to take it and we're going to cover it. And we're going to take a little bit of our liquid white, maybe drop it over here, grab up some of that very light colored blue, just so we change it so it's not pure white. Come in here and just very lightly tap. Look, now we skip down, skip down, skip down. Don't need to have it so super bright. All right, we'll put in a little bit of darkness down around the bottom. <clears throat> Take that, pull it down. That's very much, very much it right there. Very much it. And you take those. Kind of very hit them enough to make your your tree trunks and branches and stuff go as lightly as you want them because you're never going to see them all and that's not even our foreground tree you know what i mean that's not the thing we're looking at okay a little bit of liquid white maybe into that little bit of blue over here finish off our water line just like that a little bit of wave out there in the side don't want to cover up too much of that gorgeous color right there now we don't want to have, we have to have a little bit of difference, a little bit of darkness in our, in our, the face of our snow. Even if we're going to have white snow right here, we have to have some darkness to it. It can't just be white on top of white on top of white on top of white. So let's fill in these trees first. Yeah, rock hard. Okay, a little bit of liquid white into our blue over here. I like using the blue as, as our shadow color. 
and highlighting the trees like that because it's very it makes it very cold very shadowy very cold okay now again we're going to do these ones we're not going to cover the whole thing we're just going to touch down making these little z shapes right little z patterns flip the brush over not trying to cover up all of the tree come back in a little bit more liquid white right back in here a little bit more blue because the other guy's behind this other guy come in there right tap down on top of our branches don't have to cover everything you want to have it nice and dark you're not going to see everything it doesn't have to be all the same you get these very soft little snow covered little trees over here fantastic okay take that same dark color pull it down in one direction again gonna rotate it up dump in these bits of bushes right just a little difference take these guys pull them out however you like them just so they're different you get this little bit down around the bottom back into our liquid white Right, over here it's getting a little bit brighter we'll flip the brush over again toss off a couple little things doesn't need to be too crazy and the ones that get too low you just take them back to where they need to be very simply done very very simply done just be a little bit darker back there is all all right now we're going to take our brush run it through our white paint just like that load our brush up full of white Lots of light right here. They come back. See how it mixes in with all of that darkness that's underneath? Get a little bit more. Long strokes. Mix it all in, right? Doesn't all have to be the same amount of white. Got our bright areas, got our dark areas. Very, very, very pretty little piece right there. Soft, soft little thing. A little bit back there. A little bit more. It's very nice. Very, very nice. We could do lots of stuff. We could have done all these white from the beginning, right? It's a little bit dirty back there, but it's all right. We could do loads of things, though. Poof, a little bit of softness. Maybe the sun's coming through. It's brightening up all of that stuff back there. You got a little bit of bush just by hitting it upside down. Get these cool little things that are lighting up in the morning sun. Fantastic. Fantastic. Got our cold side over here. Nice and chilly. Now let's take the family. We're going to throw the family in. Before we forget, and everyone goes, where's the family of birds? If this is your first time watching and you've scrolled through to this part, the uh, I always put in these birds as a representation of my family. It's the only way we really get to travel. And it's me and my wife and my daughter, and they're part of my signature for every Paint with Josh painting, right? And when you watch a live video, the fans go crazy for the birds. That is very cool. You can put a little house down here. Now, you can always stop at any moment. You don't have to continue on. You can stop your painting at this time and be like, this is it. And then, you know, I did this version of Josh's painting. It's very cool, right? You don't always have to continue. Now, we're going to take our our thing we're going to throw in a little house back here rotate our brush over turn it down the other way that's why it's shaped like this it's shaped like the peak of a house all right so we come up scrape it down turn it over match that up scrape down there come over here scrape down that side it's got to be longer on one side than the other now we're going to take all this stuff that's back here get it off of the canvas just like that and we might as well take our white run it along the top of our roof where we'd imagine our roof would be pull it down just like that now being on the very edge of the canvas right here sometimes it's harder to get it all there we go don't have to have it be perfect but you want it to be there now come down straight down on the sides and again because the canvas that little beam that's back here just wants to be a little pain in the butt right now that's what it's going to do okay we're going to pull it down just a little bit because they always need to get a little softer and when you always need it to grow, I never do it long enough. Okay, now that it's all about the same length, we need to make it look 3D. And the way you do that is you make it like a V, like it's coming out of this. So we're gonna start back here, we're gonna pull it to the back, we're gonna stop about halfway. So now we've come down this way. Now we're gonna go back the other way and get higher and higher and higher and higher. 
And now the P, the, the whatever is we're painting is going to look more three-dimensional because it has this point right here, okay? Now our point, unfortunately, needs to be back there. And poof, we got a cool little cavity. You can always line, some of the times I line the edge right underneath the, the, the curve, so then I can tell that's the corner of my building. And if that's the corner, then I know this part back here needs to be really dark. So we'll add a little bit of our, just our, our dark black color and then our brown. So it's very much darker than the front of the cabin's gonna be. And now we're gonna get that white again, grab up our brown. Now where can we work here, Josh? There we go. And just mix it up enough that we have these little streaks, just like that, you see all these streaks? Scrape up through those streaks, come up here, straight down, straight down. All right, poof, poof, poof. You get these real cool little drag marks. Come in here, scrape up the rest. Come on to this side, down, down. And now we have a light side and a dark side to our cabin. Very cool. And very simply done. Just like that. Got to get it out on the edge. Okay, we can take our door and literally just scrape it out. Just like that. Take a little bit of dark. Fill it in. Now we got this little open doorway to our... Our cabin. Very cool. Looking. Very cool. Looking. It's almost, we only almost forgot. We gotta throw the white on top of our roof on this side. Got very thick right there. Doesn't need to be that thick. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. Poof. Now, we'll go back in with that lighter color. Drag it down just like that. Again, it doesn't have to be the most perfect bit of wood. You can even go as far as pulling over your door if you need to, and then going back in, cutting it back in just like that. You can even cut in a window over here, but I like it so much, I'm going to leave it just like that. Okay, we're going to take our bit of brown because we can't. It's always, you know, I always imagine a, a muddy path outside of a house. Especially when you're, it's all snowy everywhere, you got all the dirt underneath, and it's just never fun. Always the mud. Mom always yelled at us for the mud, right? Or am I the only one that got yelled at for the mud? So it's got to be nice and dirty and nasty outside of his house. There we go. And then all of our angles got to make sense, remember. Get this cool little thing. <clears throat> now, we could throw like a giant old tree again. Like if you don't want to continue, you can stop, and yours will be done. And uh, it'll look fantastic. But if you did want to continue, we could add a much bigger tree and do it like that. Little guy way off here. I love the upward facing ones. They're much more fun. They're much more uplifting. I don't know. I just like them. I like them better. They're like they're growing. These ones like they're dying. The other ones like they're growing. Yeah, we could do like a giant old tree right here through the family. So, okay, let's take a little bit, a little bit of our dark color, our black, our crimson, our blue. Just mix them all up right here. That's why we use the shadow color like that. That's why it's all right here all the time. I'm just gonna go cover over a little bit of our, of our guy with a couple little bushes, right? All nasty and gross. I'm just trying to make them stand out just like that, where we get these cool little things happening. And we seal off the bottom of our painting, just like that. Right. Poof, poof, poof. Super easily done. Now we'll come back and we'll highlight all of those. Maybe just by touching with our one inch brush and the liquid white, look at that. Just by tapping at it, literally. Literally tapping it. Now we're gonna come over here, scrape up the brush, uh, scrape up the knife in those dark areas and just create little, far away, little sticks, little branches, little things that end up growing out of the bottom of our canvas, right? Holding up all of these gorgeous little plants over here. Gotta hold them all up somehow. Now, why don't we do one more big tree? Not as big as you guys think I'm gonna go. There we go. Just big enough. Just big enough. So we're gonna put them right here. Hmm. Yeah, we'll put them right there. 
All right, not as tall as the other guys. Right off in the center. Proof had him live right down on the edge. And that'll be cool, right? Coming in from the side, popping up. All right, just waiting for the, the one little bit to pop out the side. And you're like, ooh, that's very cool. All right, and you come back, you're like, ah. Tap again, see what else we can get to start happening. But you have to go back and get more paint. You gotta have a lot of paint. If you want a big, thick, textured tree, you gotta have it stay nice and textury and grippy as it's growing down. And all that paint wants to disappear. It wants to stop. It wants to go away. It wants you to blend it away. There we go. Cool little bits of tree right here. All right, got all those little arms, little fingers trying to grow. Now we'll take this very lightly. Just kind of pull it down. Just like that. It's kind of cool. It's like we're living on the edge of a the thing here we need like a big piece of rock or something to come out and make sense why that tree sits like that nice and soft little things soft soft little things just like that all right let's do a little bit more darkness to come off of this guy there we go that's looking better in my mind. Okay, we're gonna do one little rock over here. A little soft bit of dark paint comes out like that. So we're just doing the underside of the rock, right? And this bit, it's all gonna be pulled down, be all shadowy down here. We wanna leave that bit on top. I got the wrong brush. There we go. We're gonna leave that bit on top. This guy's gonna come down here, just very lightly so we have that deep, dark shadow. We even need a little bit more. All right, then we can always blend away what we don't like. That's the fun part. Taking and blending away all the stuff that doesn't make sense or that we just don't like having in our painting. Look at how thick it is up there. There we go. Get our snow covered rock. Now we're gonna come back and add some snow. So we'll take our white, mix it a little bit up with that little bit of blue just so it's not, again, pure white. And come up here over the top, extend the white out over the top of it, and now it looks like a piece of frozen something as we pull it off the side, right? A little piece of frozen bit of snow or wood or stone, some sort of something. All right, take this guy with our knife, add our snow in, let it blend in down here so it's not so bright, right? You gotta have the differences. It's all about how many times do you go over it? How many times do you go over it before you decide that it's kind of where you like it? That's the question. Sneak some of that in there. Get this cool little thing, guys. That's very neat. I love these easy little paintings. Poof. Now, again, I don't like it to be so super textured. So we're going to go over it with a, with a brush, just very softly. <coughs> Got to knock all the paint off one of these brushes. Very softly. And just have it go that little bit of kind of in-between raw texture and brushed out. And that's Paint with Josh's style right there. Look at that. It's almost like we can see inside of the cabin now, too. The harder we push and the more times we go over it, the more it's going to change. There we go. That's looking neat. And pull it out to the side, just down there. Why don't we do, just to finish it off, we'll do one little guy, like a little bush down here. Just a little messy thing. Come back with our liquid white. Pop in a couple things just with the corner of the brush. That's all we're really using. Just tapping in the corner. Back to our knife. Scrape in a couple of little branches for him. He's nice. He's like, thanks guys. Thanks for that. Right off there, trying to survive. Trying to survive. Poof. Man, that looks neat. 
All right, guys, let's highlight this other tree. We'll be good to go. And we're gonna go our liquid white right down there. We don't need it to be so super thick. And all we're gonna need to do is just touch this guy. Just very ever so lightly, keeping it dark where the light is behind, right? Don't need to cover that all up. And then making it more bright where our, you know, background is darker. Poof, cool little bit of tree right there. Fantastic. Fantastic. We need to take some of that liquid white. See if we can't brighten up maybe just the side of this guy. Yeah, it's not really gonna work. He's good the way he is. Okay, take over here. There's always a few little things growing at the bottom of the trees that I see anyway. And that looks like a finished painting right there, guys. Take our dark color since we have this very pretty background to sign on. So we'll take the dark, come over here, drop in the old Josh Hancock, and call it a day. So, man, this one came out great. Well, I got a mountain of brushes to go clean up, guys. A literal mountain of brushes to go clean up. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you try it. I hope you send it in. I hope you post it. And when you post it, tag at Paint with Josh by typing the little at symbol and uh, Paint with Josh. And it'll come up with a list. You click Paint with Josh and you're good to go. So uh, again, I want to thank you guys for tuning in and trying this one. I, it's, it really brightens my day when you guys send them in and, and uh, me and Blondie get to look at them. And we're like, oh man, it's so fantastic. Like we reach so many people. It's literally insane how many people we reach. Literally insane. Look at that, we're finger painting like Bobby Mazalda, or Malzada. I always forget how to pronounce his name. I'm sorry, Bobby. I love you. Know that I love you. There we go. Little things happening, right? Just by finger painting. So again, I want to thank you for tuning in and trying this one out and sending them in. We always love it. And, uh, you know, until I see you next time, or five minutes from now when you rewatch this video, or watch another video, or I pop back onto your screen, you guys take care, have the rest of a good day, and we'll see you later. Bye!